It's generally been going in Filler's favour. But Catchy has the break. Yeah, it's a good break. He's made the one ball. Pretty much like what Chris was doing and looks to have a shot. Start of the match in any pool match, you always feel like he's going to be key because if you can settle down early and get a couple of racks on the board, everything just feels a little easier and the game of pool can often be on your side. You know, we do see comebacks, of course, but in our first match of the last 16, it was all one-way traffic. Catch you with a chance here on the two. All the balls look to be split nicely. Perhaps the most high profile of their meetings this year was at the European Open. All the talk was about Filler perhaps winning a big title on home ground. Akachi almost put pay to that as early as the last 64 stage. Filler coming through in a hill hill finish. From my point of view, it was one of the greatest matches I'd ever seen. Filler would ultimately lose in the quarterfinals to Mario He. 23 years of age, Eklund Kachi, which is so hard to believe when you consider how long he's been around as an established player. Nice positional shot there. This table is brand new. No one's hit a ball on this table here this week. It's been sat in the centre of this arena. All the matches have been going on around it. The trophy's been sat in the middle with the USA flag draped over it. Well, yeah, this main arena, as you say, has been there, centre stage. The players looking at it and seeing the promised land. Such a long road to get this far, and that's really why anyone left in it has got to like their chances. They've come through a long road. In Catchy's case, he's had so many close matches along the way. This is the way to stamp your authority on a match against one of the greatest players in the world. Break and run in the opening rack. Kachi leads 1-0. Still a long way from going through to the quarterfinals, but Chris Melling is already there after that remarkable 10-2 win over Lee Van Corteza. Let's hear what he made of us. I'm here with Chris Melling. Just won 10-2 over Lee Van Corteza. Was you in a rush, buddy? Yeah, the table booked at the restaurant. No, I uh, I played really well there. I played like that the last game, you know, froze my opponent out. And uh, Levan made a few mistakes, which helped me. But I felt, all in all, I felt I played really well. I put him under pressure and uh, happy with my game. Yeah, it looked like you broke really well. Have you been breaking well all week? Is this something you've worked on? Because obviously the break format's changed. Uh, not really. I've not really worked on it. I just, you know, I've had a few practice games beforehand. I was making balls my first match, second match I couldn't make balls on the break. Second Third match I was making them, okay. and it's continued so far. And uh, long may it continue. Obviously, you won ten two. Before the match, did you expect you could win with such like a big scoreline? Obviously, you know how good Lee Van is. It was pretty much one sided match, wasn't it? Yeah, Lee Van's one of the best players in the world. You know, all the Filipinos are great players, so you know you've got your hands full. But I know, I know my own game, I know how well I was playing. And you just need to look on the break. If I can see the lowest numbered ball after the break, then uh, I can win the tournament. Well, that always helps, I suppose. Um, three more matches to be US Open champion. How would it feel to be wearing that green jacket and win the US Open? Yeah, it'd be great. Obviously, there's a long way to go. I take each match as it comes, and uh, every opponent's a difficult opponent. You know, Josh Villa's still in, and, and players like him, the reigning champion, Carlo Biardo's still in. So, a lot of work to do, but I'm just focusing on my own game, and uh, hopefully, I can keep winning. Up next, you've got Max Lackner or Roland Garcia. That's pretty tight at the minute. Does it matter who you play? Do you care? Any preference? No, don't care who I play. It's, it's, I just focus on my own game. You know, at the end of the day, if you're going to win the tournament, you've got to beat the best players, and them two are, are great players, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, mate, congratulations on your win, and good luck.
in the quarterfinals. Cheers, Paul. I love the simplicity of Chris Melling's thinking. Again, when I was talking to him last night, he said, look, if I get 10 chances in a race to 10 and I don't win the match, that's down to me. He doesn't cause unnecessary complication. Well, we're seeing a bit of a trend here, aren't we? Because the start of Chris's matches, after the break, he was getting the opportunities, nice table layouts, and this is Catch's second break, and just look at the balls. The balls are, are nice, but he's still got to break well. There's an art to potting the one ball in the side pocket. And this is just a case of connecting the dots. Don't do anything silly. It's not been a great year for him in the biggest, most high profile events. He's been playing well though in other more low pro profile events, which still are very strong fields. He's been to two Euro Tour finals. Did lose them both. One against Filler, the other against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. code catch years ago actually used to play really slow and I mean slow when he's down on the shot he used to aim for what felt like minutes yeah it's unusual normally if players change their pace noticeably in their career they tend to get slower as they get older but when he was so extremely young you're absolutely right a very deliberate style I think you might say Well, you can't start better than this. <laughs> two racks, two break and runs, 2-0 to Eklund Kachi. Now, as you were saying to Chris Melling in the interview there, Carl, he will play the winner of the match between Max Lechner and Roland Garcia. Lechner, Lechner leading that one 7-5 at the moment. Let's hear from Eklund Kachi. I feel pretty good. I've been taking my chances. Uh, all players lately they're playing good and uh, having a tough matches. Had a few wins like 9-7 but the important is to win. Before I go to edit any tournament my goal is to win the trophy and uh, I'm looking forward for it but I'm gonna take it one by one. Joshua is a very good player, very strong opponent. I'm looking forward to playing him. I beat him a few times in the beginning then lately he beat me a couple of matches and I'm looking forward to revenge. In 2017, I lost in the final. I got a runner-up, so I'm looking forward to winning this time. You and I were both at the Premier League in Milton Keynes right at the start of the year, Carl, and Eklund Kachi was just a mess that week. Couldn't get himself together. He was turning up late for matches, all sorts of things. Finished last in a field of 16. You never know which Eklund Kachi, from a psychological point of view, is going to turn up for any event. Yeah, to finish last in, in the Premier League, I mean, you would never have predicted that. Such a strong player, he's got a big break. Pots a good ball and things are working out nice. Josh is just a spectator at the moment. Pots a good ball, as you say, he's potted three there. Needs to be a little bit careful here just because this is quite a thin pot. Cue ball will slide off this rail. So he's going to come straight across the table. The nine ball looks to be a line where it may go. So he's either going to come below it or high. Oh, well. 
He's missed that by a long way. Yeah, that's completely at odds with what we've seen from him in the first two and a bit racks. And just when we were starting to think it was going to be a hat trick of break and runs, Filler finds himself back at the table. Yeah, nine ball can be a funny game at times, though. This is what pool is about. It's about what you are faced with. Filler, this is his first shot. Catch and miss the ball. And he's not left anything easy. Even the safety shot is nasty. Well, that is just simply ridiculous safety shot. What a beautiful shot. He had a wonderful match against Tyler Steyer in the last round. 6-5 down, turned it round to win 9-6 filler. And it was a very patient display. His tactical game, his performance in that regard was as good as I've ever seen from him. Catch will go close here. Fancy him hitting this ball. Because it's near the rail, it often means that it's a bigger target. Well, maybe he can't see that little gap that he was looking for near the centre pocket in the purple five. So if he can't, this is... I think it's a two-rail Z shot. These are so hard to judge. Sometimes you almost need two goals. Oh, great hit. Good shot. He's making full of player shot, and it's a tough shot coming up. Joshua Filler, marginally the older of the two, recently turned 25. Extension code. And as you might expect, he spent his birthday weekend winning a tournament in Slovenia. His wife Pia was there with him. She won the women's title, her first win on the Euro Tour. Joshua Filler, arguably the greatest potter on tour. And that is why his back's against the wall. He's two down. He's not really had a visit. And he strokes that one in like it's over the pocket. Well, Catch has missed a trick here as he was starting to build a lead. He had to feel the longer he could keep that going. Freeze filler out was going to be a big factor in determining his chances of pulling off an upset here. Yeah, it, can, it might take the players a couple of racks if they've never played on this table before. This is Max Lechner. Heading for the hill here. He was a quarter finalist last year. And unless Roland Garcia can win the last five racks, he's going to be there again in 22. Kachi will be kicking himself. Had such a good chance. Three balls down on the break. Mr. Routine 2 by a really wide margin. Filler eventually got in to pop that same 2.
Eklund Kachi was absolutely flying. 2 0 up against Joshua Filler. Bad miss on the two. Let Filler in to take the third rack. And meanwhile, over on table two, this is Max Lechner with this nine ball for the match against Roland Garcia. Lechner into the quarterfinals just as he did last year. And the Austrian wins 10 5 and will play Chris Melling in the quarterfinals. Three players from the Philippines made it to the last 16. Two of them now gone after Lee Van Corteza was so heavily beaten by Melling earlier. Carlo Biado, the defending Back champion, four. now the only Philippines player Joshua left. Break. He plays Trailing Conrad de Sushin. A little later. Filler's first break then. Well, he's made the one ball, but Pass as shot. you can see, the cue ball has gone. There is always a chance of more scratches, but I think overall it was a bad break because the Boy, players nine. are trying to get the cue ball off the side rail back pass. over towards where the nine sits. And obviously, it was a little bit thin and straight in the corner. Chance for catch it. The balls are opening up nicely as well. There's no real clusters, so it's all about cue ball control. Try not do anything silly. Is that to do with the responsiveness of the cloth that Chris Melling was talking about? Yeah, I think just the fact that everything's brand new. We're using a template now for the last 16. We didn't use that at the European Open. Eklund Kachi cruised through his opening match this week against Long Nguyen. Nine racks to one, but it's been close. In every match since, three nine sevens in a row against Vitaly Patsura of Ukraine, Don Kwok Huang of Vietnam, and Johan Chua of the Philippines, who was playing so well, quarter finalist here last year. And he ended up playing Dong Kwok Huang again after he had got back in through the loser side. These are the vagaries of the random draw and the double elimination format. And the Vietnamese player pushed him hard again. It was nine six in the match which took Kachi through to this showdown with the former champion. Code. Just needs one good shot here. Now the winner of the match we're watching will play the winner of the match which has just appeared on the screen in front of you there. Ko Ping Chung is on the brink. 7-9 combination coming up to close it out against Jani Uski of Finland. Part of the Finnish team which got to the quarterfinals of the World Cup of Pool this year. And he's had a great week. But it's been brought to an end by Ko Ping Chung. He wins 10-7. Catcher played a nice little shot to get on that six just coming through the middle of both balls. The eight ball is sat in a perfect spot to get on the nine. So the scratch from Filler is going to be punished. And it had to be, didn't it? Because Filler is so psychologically strong. If you have any chance to put any dent in his confidence and his belief whatsoever, you've got to take it. Just show him. If he does make mistakes, give away chances, he'll pay for it. And apart from one... Very surprising laps on the two ball in the previous rack. It's been pretty perfect so far from Eklund Kachi. He goes two clear again at 3-1. So let's have a look at what's been going on so far today. Two rounds to...
Kazakis to come on table two. Kazakis, the man who knocked out the world champion, five. Shane Van Boning. Eklund catch to break, leading by three racks to one. Trying to put that yellow one ball in the side pocket. There you see time and time again. You see the difference with Catch's cue ball on the break, didn't you? As opposed to Filler's last one. Watch the cue ball here. See how it comes across and tracks towards the nine? Sometimes we'll see golden breaks because the cue ball hits the nine and it can go in one of the side pockets. I'm sure we will see that happen at some point. It's just 18 when he got to the US Open final. He was having a wonderful year. He's won that big event in New York, beating Carlo Beato in the final. He's a world championship semi-finalist that year. Beat Francisco Sanchez Ruiz to get to the US Open final, but quickly found himself 8-0 down against Jason Shaw. Made a bit of a revival, but very hard to come back from that position. And lost 13-4. Just 18 years of age getting to the final. The thing with Catch is because he, he looks a lot older, you just you forget he's still young. Well, that's worked out nicely. I didn't think he had a shot after the break, but he's found a little gap there. And now, well, it's another good chance. That pot on the two of comparable quality to fill its pot on the same ball in the previous rack. Or rather, the rack before that, rack three. Gonna have to go forward with the cue ball, purple five into the right center. And you need to roll through and at least one straight on the five. Doesn't want to land too short and then. The cue ball starts rolling towards the brown, the nine ball and the eight ball. Now you see, where's he finished with the cue ball? That's going to be good enough. Yeah, it's on the rail, but it's all about making sure you just pop the five now. Felt like the early part of his career was a series of records and milestones. Became the youngest ever Moscone Cup player in 2018. Still just 19 years of age at the time. He's become a mainstay of the side ever since. Yeah, and if he's going to represent Europe this year, he's going to need a wild card. Unless, I think, if he gets to the final or wins it, is it, Michael? He has to win us. Win it. Right? Yeah. We know that Joshua Filler will be in that team. That was confirmed in August. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz confirmed his debut appearance yesterday. Alban Ocean currently occupies the other automatic spot, but there are still players left who can overtake him. Catchy is one of those. And he's certainly putting himself in a strong position here. Eklund Kachi leads Joshua Filler 4-1. Filler came into this last 16. I think most people would agree is the favourite to win his second US Open. Let's get some thoughts from the German. It's great to be through into being in the last 16. And um, to be honest, I'm playing really well. The atmosphere is great. Many, many people are watching. Uh, they are really into it. So it gives, as a player, it gives a great feeling. and. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun. Kachi is a great player, to be honest. Uh, we played many, many times. He beat me already a couple of times, so I know what to expect. I know that it's going to be a really tough one. It could have been the final two. So I, I have to play my best, obviously, but we will see how it goes. And if I get my chances, I might win. To win this event for the second time would mean everything to me, because this is why I'm here. This is what I'm working hard. Um, so I hope I get the chances, and uh, yeah, we will see you later. 
Three breaking runs already, though, from his opponents. I've put Filler 4 1 down. Eklund Catchy looking very, very sharp. Jeremy Jones was talking earlier about a chat he'd had earlier in the week, and he took a lot of encouragement from that about how Catchy was going to play. All well and good saying it, but he's really delivering at the moment. Well, it looked like the nine ball was tracking over towards that right on pocket, and it was a previous break where we spoke about what could happen. Look, if he doesn't get kicked again, I'm not saying it would have got, got in, but it was going close anyway. Does he have a shot on this two? He's got awkward queuing. Does he go in the corner? This is what Filler's after. He's after he's after the balls to punish Catchy after the break. That's the only way he's going to get back in the match. Still early days. Race to 10, Michael, now. That's a big thing in a game of pool. Once you go from 9 to 10, just you know, it's just another rack. But it's big. It just means it's almost like you get one more chance of a possible comeback. Yeah, and it gradually moves up. It goes up to 11 in the semis and then 13 in the final. And by the time it gets to that, it almost feels like you're having to win the match and then go out and win it a second time. Of course, it makes a particular difference when you've got two big names like this. You'd expect it to be close, as it was in that wonderful match in Fulda where Filler came through 9-8. It's not a time foul. Ignore that on the screen. Obviously, some sort of technical issue. The modern world was always summit in the world of technology. Well, he's gone for it. And it's straight in the middle. Yeah, he couldn't really get position on this three, but what he has done is he stayed at the table to play a telling safety shot. What's he got? Ball line looks good. How's his pace? Looks good from the overhead, doesn't it? Good shot. And this is what you can do when you're controlling a match. You've got to maintain that control, whatever happens. Don't let your opponent get a foothold. Even if you're not potting, just keep the pressure on him. Make him come up with the answers. That's what Catchy's doing at the moment. Well, this is what Filler needed as he got away with one. Tried to pot the ball. Maybe Catchy can see an edge, but Catchy's jump shot is a lot easier. I think he's got the jump cue in his hand. going to try and jump draw this back as well just draw back past the nine then he's got a combo yeah that's what he tried it was a good opportunity there for catchy but the run of the ball is definitely favoring Eklund catchy at the minute because the purple five has tied up on the four it might be okay as long as the four goes in the top corner josh is just having a look i think you can mark that one down as a mistake on your sheet of paper michael catchy would have fancied that shot so Josh feels like this goes in the side. And the side pockets on a pool table can be weird. You just catch one of them points because they're so sharp. Usually when you're at the point, it doesn't go in, especially the near one. That's what he did. He caught the near point. Catchy will be breathing a huge sigh of relief out of his chair so quickly. Well, these could be really big moments. Didn't manage to make the pot on the jump shot. Seemed as though Filler was going to rein him in just a touch again. But now, 
so quickly. Kachi back at the table. Torsten Holman there, the multiple world champion. Miller's fellow German looking on in the background, you may have noticed. Five German players made it to the 64 player single elimination stage, but Filler was the only one who got any further. Holman was among those. Nicely done there to tee this ball up into the opposite corner. And this racks. Well, it's going to be over. All the balls are sat in perfect position and that miss from Filler has a chance to keep himself in this match and now he's got work to do. Yeah, he was very solid in turning it round against Tyler Steyer yesterday, but he was never in a position anything like this. Greatest of respect to Steyer, who played really well in both his matches yesterday. Today, Filler is up against someone much more accustomed to these big matches on the main stage. Eklund is whistling a catchy tune. He's halfway to victory and a
Big story developing here on the main table. On this Friday in Atlantic City, Eklund Kachi leading the former champion Joshua Filler by five racks to one in their last 16 clash. Mark Weisterbosch, as you can see, has made a good start against Alex Kazakis, who knocked out SVB yesterday. 2-0 to the Dutchman. And Si Cha Chen is now actually leading Mario He 2-0. I can update that one. Wins earlier today for Chris Melling and Max Lechner, who will play each other in the quarterfinals. And also for Koping Chung, who at the moment Thank you. seems... We will be taking on Michael this Kachi man in the last eight. Dream performance so far from Kachi. Fillers miss into the side in rack six, enabling the Albanian to go four clear. He's absolutely crunching this break. Look at this. Crunching it. I can't think of anyone who's broken the balls better in any match this week. I actually remember he broke really well at the European Open, did Kachi. Actually losing to Filler in that very major event. The last major event before this very one. Look at the split he's got here. This is this is worrying times for Joshua Filler now. Well, Filler is bound to have noticed all the big names who went out yesterday. Albin Ocean, Jason Shaw, world champ Shane Van Bonin as well. And there's no way he wouldn't have been thinking this is a big chance for me to win another of the High prestige, historic titles in the sport. But equally so, it gives a chance to guys like Kachi who have not won a title of this stature in the past. Of course, they'd have a chance anyway. They'd be capable of beating those guys, but certainly helps when someone else removes them from their path. Helps a good deal more when you play the way he is today. It's amazing, isn't it? Catchy, just two balls away from going 6-1 up. The first match I thought was going to be a lot closer on paper, but you can never guarantee what's going to happen. A nine foot by five foot pool table. This is the beauty of the game. 6-1 well, isn't at the level of almost insurmountable quite yet, but it's certainly one of those situations where the turnaround is to start. It's pretty much got to start right now. Because with his fourth break and run of the match, Eklund Kachi leads his many-time Moscone Cup teammate Joshua Filler by the remarkable score of six racks to one. An update on Mark Boisterbosch. The Dutchman now leads Alex Kazakis 3-0. Kazakis has been right in the mix of that Moscone Cup race. Looking to claim those automatic spots. This is the match I'm talking about here, but it's still just about within reach for Boisterbosch as well. He can get a Moscone Cup debut by winning this title. Mario He, another player looking to force his way into the Moscone team. 2-0 down against Si Cha Chen. Yeah, of course, Sanchez Ruiz is in that team. He's a rookie. He's going to be going to Vegas to represent Europe for the first time. If Bice de Bosch, the man right, playing this shot, or he I can catch the break, was to qualify, they would also be a rookie. So, Team Europe be full of rookies. This is relentless, Carl. Yeah, Filler's in trouble here. Catch is not missing. He's, he's absolutely pounding the break. You can just see the consistency. The fact that he's getting that cue ball over and back into the nine. The nine's moving every break. And the one's flying in the side pocket. It isn't easy to do. We've seen Filler's only break of the match. Resulted in a scratch because he hit the break too thin.
And along with that, he's getting shots at the lowest ball. There's no clusters. And these finishes, are, they're easier now because he's 6-1 up. 6-1 down just feels a little tougher. Every finish you, you face with, you know there's pressure on it because if you make a mistake, you've lost. Catches, catches loving life out there. It's already the best run he's had in one of these high-profile events this season. Went out early in the World Championship, last 64 against Loho Sum, who's beaten so many top players this year. First round of the World Masters. Didn't make it to single elimination at the UK Open. He was beaten by Daniel Massiol Extension code. in his second match. And did have four wins on the loser side before losing to Alexa Peixelge. As we've said, he ran into filler as early as the last 64 of the European Open in Germany and went out at that stage as well. So this is completely at odds with the way his year has been in these huge events. Did play for Albania with Bezar Spahu in the World Cup of Pool. He beat Italy in the first round, only the second match Albania have ever won at the World Cup. Heavily beaten then by the eventual winner Spain in round two. But he's that sort of player, isn't he? He might not have that consistency, but he's always capable of going into any event, whatever his form, of being in the shake-up. Yeah, Catchy obviously plays a lot of the events and he travels around, but, you know, he likes to have a bit of fun as well. He likes to live a, a different type of lifestyle. He plays a lot of poker, very good poker player as well. Likes to sleep through the day and stay awake all night. He's that type of character and he's not like Filler. You know, Joshua Filler comes to the events with his wife, Pia, and they live and breathe the game of pool. They watch pool. You know, you often see them watching matches and, and all the social media. They, you know, on a Saturday night, they might be having a takeaway watching a pool match. Catch is different. And it's not a bad thing. He's just a different, different character. But he's up for it this week. You can see it. You can see it in his eyes. I know the fillers are planning a holiday to the Dominican Republic in a few weeks' time. A rare break from the game, as you say. They'll be packing their bags here in Atlantic City quite soon. Because that's five in a row for Eklund Kachi. He's not just beating Joshua Filler, he's giving him a lesson. It's 7 1. Let's have a look in on table one. Mario here, as we've said, so much on the line for him this week. He can get in the Moscone Cup team, he can even go to number one in the live rankings. But if any of those things are going to happen, he needs to start turning things around against Si Chia Chen. 3 0 down at the moment. Yeah. Already one Austrian player in the quarterfinals in Max Lechner. Yeah, this man at the table now, he's. He's like undercover. He really is. Not really seen him in a lot of the matchroom events, especially, especially at this stage, so we've got to keep an eye on him. Had a very comfortable win in the last round over Oscar Dominguez, who'll be making his return to the Moscone Cup team after a five-year absence next month. 7-1. Well, this is, this is getting silly, this, the consistency of this break. I was saying about the fillers maybe packing their bags. Joshua Filler at the moment might be thinking it's time to pack up his cue case because he's just not getting a look in at the moment. There have been some false dawns with Catchy over the years, no doubt about it. Putting great performances, had great tournaments and then not been able to follow it up. If he can play anything like this through to the finish, then maybe this could be the week for him to go one better than five years ago when he was runner-up. Still the closest he's come to winning the title, any title, 
of this prestige. Well, everything's working out nice. As the cue ball was tracking down table, I was thinking, is it going to sneak in behind the brown seven? But it isn't. Still work to do. He's got to pot this three. Looks like he's going to play it off the purple five ball. And he's got to get back for this pink four, which is the ball on top of the nine ball. Purple five is going to cause some problems, yeah. It has done, so maybe a small opportunity about to open up for filler. Extension code. He's trying to see if he can pull the cue ball back behind the five, but a ball must hit a rail after contact unless you pot a ball. That is the rule here. So he's got to make sure the cue ball or any other ball strikes a rail. So that's why he's changed his mind, because it was a bit funny. He's going to play thin off this. Maybe try and push the pink four near the six. Yep. And try and get a good cue ball. I'd love it to finish on the rail. Not bad. So Filler back at the table for the first time since that miss in the side pocket three racks ago. I mean, I say it's not bad, but it's not great either. Good shot. Catches may go airborne, he's brought the jump cue around with him, he's going to have a look maybe a couple of rail kicks or the jump but you know when the cue ball's not tight up against balls the jump cue's always going to be on and that's what he's decided to have a go at so this is not an easy shot, it's not an easy jump shot but things are going his way in this match Stayed over the pocket, and I think he's got away with one. Yeah, he has, because I can just see Filler coming straight to the table with the short stick as well. Good effort from Catchy, though. Well, it's now or never for Joshua Filler. This simply has to go. He's got to win this rack, and he's got to put a three or a four pack together. No, it's not happening for the young man. The former champ, the 2019 champ. Yeah, I mean, there was almost a look of resignation on his face there as he left the table, like he knows this has got not my day written all over us. I wonder what Carlo Biardo's thinking, our defending champion. He's seen his buddy Lee Van Cortez exit the event. Joshua Filler may not be far behind him. and Are things just opening up for the repeat? Eight years since everyone successfully defended the US Open. Shane Van Boning. He's breaking Carl and the way he's running through these racks. I've got to say, it's about 50 50 that Filler's already played his last shot in this match. Oh, 
This is turning into one of the great performances in the career of Ekman Kachi, and he only needs two more to pull off one of his biggest results. He Here in Atlantic City, it's been a theme today to see so many players racing away at the start of matches. Nowhere more so than on the main table, Eklund Kachi, 8-1 up on Joshua Filler. Now this is Si Cha Chen, attempting the nine ball and potting it for a 4-0 lead, he thought, against Mario He. And then looking on as the cue ball trundled into a corner packet, pocket. I can tell you, Si Cha Chen has since taken the next rack to restore his three-rack advantage. 4-1 there at the moment. Mario He, though, at the table, as you can see at the moment. But what about this performance from Eklund Kachi? He's had five breaking runs. It's not been Joshua Filler's day at all. And Kachi already needs just two more. So eager to get on with it. And wouldn't you be if you were playing like this? Yep, the break again, the one ball goes. The nine ball was moving. All because he gets that cue ball coming across off that side rail, back into it. Time and time again, how many times does he keep doing that? It's not easy to do as well. Even under the old break rules, five break and runs in the first eight racks you've won in a match would have been pretty impressive. But under the new rules that have come in in the last few months, Scarcely believable.
Look at that, 17 balls off the break. This is what Josh needs though, he, he needs the balls to start to punish Catchy off the break. He needs visits, maybe he's only going to get one more chance of a comeback. This looks a little pacey, and all comebacks have to start somewhere. We've seen these type of score lines being dug back from the depths before. Talking all this year about the new world ranking system, and we're coming pretty close to the point of having our first full year official points based list. Shane Van Boning started the week leading that. His early exit, though, opened the door for a number of players to perhaps overtake him and go to number one this week. Defeat for Filler here, though, would end his hopes. This is just what happens, though. It's simply unbelievable. He's 8 1 down. He's potted a good ball. He needs a little bit of luck with cue ball because he was crashing into another ball. Couldn't help that. And just looks where the cue ball has finished. He's now he's got a horrible shot. He's jacked up, just off straight. He's gonna fire this ball in. At eight, one down. So often he delivers the goods with tough shots under pressure. In this situation, it would be so impressive if he did it. And he's done well there to put things out of his mind. But how's this finished? Well, he doesn't pass the six, does it? I mean, if the bank shot's on, if he can bank it, if the six not in the way, he might just have a go at the bank. It's tough to see from the overhead. Well, it's almost a nothing to lose scenario now. Yeah, good safety. That's fair enough. Not blaming at all, playing that shot. I have to say, Carl, even if he doesn't win this US Open and claim an automatic Moscone spot, if this is the kind of form that he can Extension keep showing ball. even for another couple of matches, Alex Laley is going to find it very hard not to put him in the team. Yeah, he's got a tough job on his hands. Well, I don't think there's ever been a time when we're going to see so many players with strong cases to be in the team missing out because there are just so many who've shown great credentials this year. <laughs> well, when it's your day, it's your day, I'm afraid. It's not been Filler's day, but it's definitely been Catch's. And look at that, just perfect on the six as well. Settle down, please. Well, he played so well when they met in the European Open, as we've said. He must have come away from that match thinking, what have I got to do? to beat one of these guys. Well, maybe this is the answer. Produce arguably the best breaking performance we've seen all week. And stick rigidly to the task. And all of that has got him to the hill. He's won seven racks in a row now. Needs just one more to set up a clash with Ko Ping Chung. Well, he's got a smile. He knows he's had a great year already. He's still got the Moscone Cup to come. But with so many big events and so many really good players around now, you're going to have days of disappointment like this. News from table two. It's now three all between Mark Price de Bosch and Alex Kazakis. Si Cha Chen now leading Mario Heat 4-2. So those matches still with hill. some way to run. Doesn't appear that's the case here. Remember Filler? Won the UK Open this year. He won the World Masters. He won gold in the World Games. The European Championship straight pool. A couple of Euro Tour titles as well. It doesn't look as though the US Open is going to be falling his way. 
Yeah, our feature table, the table we're watching, well, both matches have been completely one-sided, but the other tables haven't. They're nice and tight, so there's going to be drama, and the crowd here... Got good views of all three tables. There's, there's a nice crowd here today. And I'm sure every other match we see on this table coming up, it's not always going to be one-sided. We've also got the SVB Junior Open going on. Players coming from all over. Some of them extremely young and some of them showing wonderful technique and talent. That's been happening over the last couple of days on some of the outside tables. And if any of those kids want to see a master class and how to play this game at the highest level, well, this is it. Well, Joshua Phillips took his glove off, he thinks. His title hopes are over in just a couple of shots to go and I think he will be. Well, they've met so many times in big matches in 2022. Filler has very much had the upper hand. Going into this, though, if someone had said, well, Catchy's going to win this match, the reaction would have been, OK, well, that's a bit of a surprise, but not a massive one. We know what a capable player he is. But nobody on earth would have predicted, not just this score, but anything remotely approaching a score like this. No, we're so used to seeing Joshua Filler do this to his opponents. It's very rare someone does it to him, but... You know, the break, he's broke well, hasn't he? He's had the opportunities and he's obviously been taking them. Cue ball is perfect, so that's going to be it. Catchy's going to book his place through to the quarterfinals with a good shot here to get back on the nine. Well, he's been close before, got to the final when he was only 18. Lost to Jason Shaw. But on this kind of form, how on earth is anyone going to stop him winning this US Open? <laughs> Wonderful from Ekman Kachi. And a scoreline that no matter how many times you hear it, just seems incredible. Ekman Kachi 10, Joshua Filler 1. Another big name falls in Atlantic City.